So having understood the basics of unequal probability sampling, the introduction to the auxiliary size measures x1, x2, etc., and the derived normed size measures p1, p2, etc., they are used in the drawing the units from the population and then subsequent use of simple random sampling and the computation of first and second order intrusion probabilities and related technicalities. Now, we will venture into proper PPS with replacement and PPS without replacement sampling procedures and then from there we will see how the sampling is implemented, how the estimation procedures come up, there are a lot of things to learn. So, we will take it up now in our next module. So, in the context of unequal probability sampling using a probability vector p, when you use the size measures in the form of normed size measures p1, p2, pn, the way we have explained in the previous module, with replacement sampling is referred to as probability proportional to size with replacement sampling abbreviated as PPS WR and similarly the other one is probability proportional to size without replacement sampling referred to as PPS WOR. Now, of course, we have already indicated expressions for the inclusion probabilities under PPS with replacement for general length and under PPS without replacement for a sample of size 2. We will start from there and go for unbiased estimation of the population mean. Sir, I think I can do something at least with the first observation, be it PPS, WR or WOR sampling. That is true because when you talk about first observation, it does not really matter whether it is by with or without, with or without that will make perfect sense only when you start from the second observation onwards, whether you are using with or without. So, let us see what you have got to say. If the unit chosen is t with selection probability p t and y t is the associated y value, then expectation of y t divided by p t is summation y t divided by p t times p t which is equal to t y the population total, right? So, so, what do we have now? We have an unbiased estimator for the population total t y. I can also argue in case of PPS WR sampling, all n units are chosen with replacement and hence the same logic will apply to all subsequent draws. Therefore, based on n separate estimates, population total T of Y can be unbiasedly estimated by TY estimate equals summation YT divided by PT whole divided by n. Further, I think it should be a routine task to complete variance of t hat y and, vary and its estimate since the separate estimates y t divided by p t have I I behave like i i d observations. Oops, what am I saying? In a way you are right. Under with replacement sampling you may say so. Specifically because as you said t hat y is based on y t by p t these quantities for t equal to 1 talk to n and because you are under with replacement sampling, so they all behave like quote unquote IID, therefore they are average is estimate of the total and the variance is IID of the visions, computation of variance you know and the IID of the visions, computation of estimate of the variance you know. So, these are easy homework assignments, not at all difficult. Of course, as you can feel the results under as you also pointed out, the results under without replacement sampling are far less transparent. As you already said, under without replacement sampling, even the computation of pi i and pi ij themselves are different. And for under this, we need to have a critical close argument because based on the first observation, we have no problem. We have unbiased estimator yt by pt. But the next observation will not behave identically as this if it is without replacement. That is the problem. Sir. What if we condition on the first chosen unit? Anyway, it has to be excluded under without replacement sampling. Let me check if it makes sense. Yes. The selection probability of any other unit, say, S unequal to T at the second stage is given by PS asterisk, which equals PS over 
summation as unequal to t, ps, which is equal to ps divided by 1 minus pt for each s not equal to t. Therefore, it seems logical to suggest ys divided by ps asterisk for unbiased estimation of what? Oh yes, maybe. This is for summation s unequal to t, ys equals t of y minus yt. In that case, of course, it is a matter of adding back yt towards unbiased estimation of t of y. Am I correct, sir? It seems I'm correct since the observations are obtained in the order yt followed by ys. Yes, you have far exceeded my expectation as a student. You are absolutely right. It's a good approach indeed. So whole idea is the first observation you got, that was observation number t, you collected data yt and yt by pt, that is your estimate. Now having obtained t, when you take it out under without replacement sampling, you come up with another estimator, another unit called S. But that S has a selection probability PS over 1 minus PT. So you use the same technique YS over PS over 1 minus PT that serves as an unbiased estimator. So what you do is after you get the first unit, take it out and pretend you are dealing with a population of size capital N minus 1. So condition on cap small t, yt, you are dealing with a population of size n minus 1 and they are using PPS, modified PPS to select this unit. Therefore, Ys over Ps over 1 minus Pt that again serves as an estimator for the population total of the truncated population. Truncated population means all but T. So that is why you said Yt minus Pt. Now it's a matter of putting that T. So that is what you are saying. So T hat Y based on the first sampled unit as you said that is y2 over pt, let's call it e1, based on the first unit. t hat y based on the second sampled unit s, not different from t, but I have to have that information, who is second s, who was first t, I need that information. Then I can think of ys over ps over 1 minus pt as you said, that is the estimate of the population total for the truncated population. That takes care of ty minus yt. So you put back yt. So it is yt plus ys times etc. And you simplify that you call e2 the estimator based on the second observation but using the knowledge about the first observation. That comes in the form of yt as well as pt. We can combine the two by simple averaging. We can just take their average. As you can see, this technique is purely general. You can work out E1, you can work out E2. After E2, if you get to the third unit, then Yt plus Ys, that you take out from Ty and talk about the estimation of the total for the truncated population, eliminating T and S, and then bring back T and S. That is how you can have a very general expression. So the technique is fairly general. You can compute all the N estimators like E1, E2 successively, using the same conditional argument one by one. And finally, you can take the reference. So far as the question of getting an unbiased estimator of TY is concerned, using all the sample units, yes, you use E1 based on the first, E2 based on the first two, E3 based on the first three, and so on. Lastly, N is sub small n using all the N. And they behave like they are all unbiased estimators of ty in their own right by using conditional argument and therefore you can take their average. This is an interesting thing. It can be argued that all such estimators are pairwise uncorrelated in the sense of zero covariance. It's a good exercise to prove that the covariance of e1, e2 equal to zero. That means expected e1, e2 is the same as t square because e1 and e2 they are both individual for t Therefore, the expected value of E1 times E2 equal to capital T square, that is what one should prove. It's not difficult to prove these results. And as a matter of fact, for a very general line, all the estimators are pairwise uncorrelated. It is a very interesting result by itself, and it helps tremendously in the computation of V hat T hat Y based on without replacement sample for any sample of size n greater than 1. For example, if we know that covariance of T1, T2, I got T1, T2, this is a general result. If I know that covariance of T1, T2 equal to 0, in view of unbiasedness of both T1, T2, we can write 
expected T1 minus T2 whole square equal to Vt1 plus Vt2 because they are both unbiased. So I can insert that mu plus mu minus mu etc. That's nothing but Vt1 plus Vt2. Therefore T1 minus T2 whole square serves as an unbiased estimator for V1 plus V2. This settles the problem of unbiased estimation of V of T hat where T hat is my average and V of T hat is one fourth of this plus this. The total V T1 plus V T2 I know how to estimate. Therefore T1 minus T2 whole square by 4 serves as an estimate of variance. This is a very natural generalization for any n greater than 2. You don't have to enter into the details. You can check standard textbooks like Murthy. Murthy 1967, Cochrane's second edition 1977. They more or less discuss all these things in standard textbooks. Also, there is a book by Hedat and myself, Sina. That book also takes up all these issues. It's interesting to see how it is going. So, in this module, we got into a discussion on PPS with replacement sampling, PPS without replacement sampling, how and why under PPS with replacement sampling, the estimation procedure is quite straightforward because of the fact that the estimates behave like IID. So, you can compute mean, variance, all these things by standard approach. For without replacement sampling, the results are less transparent. The computations of first and second order inclusion probabilities are quite complicated under general PPS without replacement sampling for n equal to 2 or 3 or at most for 4, we can possibly do it, but still it is quite involved. On the other hand, for estimation of the population mean or the population total under without replacement sampling, there is a very tricky thing going on here. Based on the first unit, I can come up with yt over pt as, as per our notation. Based on the second unit, I can think of the curtailed population total minus tth unit. Therefore, for the curtailed population, the population total, revised population total is T y minus y t and that can be estimated unbiasedly by using the same principle as in the first one using the second unit itself. So, I s over P s over 1 minus P t that serves as an unbiased estimator for T y minus y t and hence we add y t to it. So, these are the estimators we are calling E 1, E 2 and this is fairly general approach we can combine we can generalize it to any sample size and then there are interesting features of these estimators namely they are all pairwise uncorrelated and that tremendously simplifies in computing the expression for an estimate of the variance of the estimated population total. So, we took up some such things there is still a lot of things to be taken up. So, let us take up meanwhile some questions and MCQs and then we will pass on to the next module dealing more about PPS. Okay, in this module, let us take up some theoretical questions. Consider PPS WR, capital N small n, sampling. with replacement sampling. Plus okay. replacement. For capital N equals 10 and small n equals 3. And suppose that the units selected are in the order 7, 3, 5. Work out an explicit expression for an estimate of the population mean. Compute an expression for its variance and an estimate of the variance. Yeah, as I said in the beginning, when the units are selected from the population using any method one by one and at random, whether it is with or without replacement, they do not have to come in increasing order of the levels naturally. So, here the units selected are 7, 3, 5. For our recording and for all subsequent computation, we tell that the units are 3, 5, and 7. We have got y3, y5, y7. We have to use that to work out explicit expression for the estimate. Under with replacement sampling, it is all straightforward. An expression for the variance and estimate of the variance, everything is straightforward under with replacement sampling. There is no challenge here. What is the next one? Do the same under PPSWOR sampling using Des Raj estimate. Yeah, I forgot to mention that the estimate that we talked about in the text, that is the Raj estimate, namely, because the sample size is 3, we will compute E1. This time it is recorded and ordered. We will compute E1 based on Y7 and P7. We will compute E2 based on Y3 and Y7. We will compute E3 based on Y5 and Y3 and Y7. Once we have all the three, we will take their average. That will give me an estimate of the population total 
or if I divide by capital M, which is 10, I get an estimate of the population mean. And that averaging technique is what is known as the Bessler estimate. What is the next one? Consider PPSWOR, big N, small n, sampling for small n equals 2. And suppose that the units selected are in the order TS. It is well known that YT over PT is an unbiased estimator for the population total, T of Y. Also, it is known that YT plus YS divided by PS asterisk is another unbiased estimate for T of Y, where PS asterisk equals PS divided by 1 minus PT. Suggest an unbiased estimator for T of Y exclusively based on YS alone. It's a very really good question, one of my favorite questions again. We know how to get an estimator based on the first unit T, that is Y2 over PT. We know how to get it based on T and S, that is the argument we have been saying again and again, YS over P star S, and then you bring back YT, that becomes YT plus YS over P star S. But that depends on both T and S. The question is, the intriguing question is, can you at all suggest an unbiased estimator exclusively based on YS alone, not without talking about YT. You can bring PS, PT, everything, but not quite the observation YT for the T. You can use just YS. It's a very good question. One of my favorite questions. What is the next one? Generalize the result in question 3 to the case of n equals 3. Yeah, so once you understand the logic for n equal to 2 for coming up with an estimator based on YS alone, when you have to generalize the result for n equal to 3, suppose the units selected are in the order T, S, R. Now you are told to find an estimator exclusively based on Y, R alone. That is the question. Okay? So what are the MCQs? 1. With reference to PPSWOR, capital N, small n sampling, and a Desraj estimator based on E1, E2, and so on until EN, it turns out that for small n equals 2, variance of E1 is more than variance of E2. Is it true or false? Depends on the p-vector or none of the above. Okay, you think about it. Okay? Interesting questions. What is the next one? With reference to PPS WR, NN, the estimators YT over PT for T1, 2N are IID with mean T of Y and variance sigma squared as a quadratic form in the YTs. Therefore, sigma squared can be unbiasedly estimated. This claim is true provided the PTs are increasing, false, true for n equals 2, and true for any n without any condition on the P's. You can see the spirit is you are talking about with replacement sampling, Y2 over PT, those are the IID observations. They are the same mean, same variance, and you know how to estimate the population variance in a random sample IID observations. Okay, so you can figure out. What should be the correct answer? What is the next one? Under PPSWOR, capital N, small n sampling, for capital N equals 10 and small n equals 3, the units selected are pi 2 and 8. But Therefore, pi 5 is more than, two, pi 2 is more than pi 8, or pi 5. All kinds of things going on. Very good. So they are referring to without replacement sampling, the units selected are 5, 2, and 8 in that order. Then what of, which of these things is likely to be true or none of them? This is a very good problem.